This is lesson four in book B, and what we're doing in this week's lesson is learning what thirds are. Um, we've been playing seconds, and as a reminder, a second is is the note right next to it. You play it either going up or going down, and as we've been reading the, reading the notes on the page clear up until now, the next note for the student has always been the one up or down, or maybe it's the same. But we haven't been skipping around. We're just about to begin skipping around. And when you play a third, we want the child to be able to see that it's line to line or it is space to space. This is really important with sight reading. Sight reading means you can sit down, you can see the music, and you can basically just play it correctly in rhythm. Not perfected, but you can sit and read it, and this is really what we've been doing up until now. We want to continue that skill. It's important to be able to sit down and just play it. But what we have to do is know how to decode it. We need to be able to recognize, oh, I know exactly how far away that is, um, without having to say the names of the notes in their head. So a third, I believe the name comes from the fact that we use our third finger, and it's the distance from our first finger, one to three. This is a third. We're skipping one white key. It doesn't matter what note we start on. It doesn't matter if we go up or if we go down. It just means we're skipping one white key as we play. We're going to continue to start on C. And playing a third here, it sounds like this. And here are our thirds. One, two. And come up. And remember, continue to have the student practice in phrases where they play this three or four times. Play this three or four times. They can look at their hands. The first couple of times that they play it. Then after that, we need to get their eyes up here. They shouldn't look at their hands. All right. After that, come and play. Come and play is like this. We start with thirds going up, and then we play the same notes, playing the thirds going down. You just need to notice the rhythm with the half notes. And remember, at the very end of each one of these, they hold it down for two, and then they want to come up with the wrist. So we're going to lift up, not far. There's not a lot of distance here between my finger and the keys note, half note, and then it starts on D, half note, half note, half note, and thirds here at the end. This is different. One, two, three, four, up. Notice the, uh, that you may have the child notice the dynamics after they learn the fingerings and they've got the rhythm down. The top line is forte, which means loud, and the last line is piano, which means uh, quiet, except for the last two. The last is more forte, which means loud. All right, after that, we have the rebounds. This is the one you want to start with at home. We always start with the technique book at home because we don't sight read the technique book. We're really focused on getting the fingers and hands and wrist and arm to do what we need to do technically to be able to play it right. This actually, I believe, is the most difficult piece in the technique book. It doesn't look difficult, but it usually takes the child two, maybe even three weeks before they can perfect it if they're having some trouble with their wrist. Um, here's, here's the way we start. We're gonna start with, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a pause just to make sure that they're playing the last note and coming up. The next measure is another set of thirds and come up. Now, as we play this, as they're practicing it, the reason why this is hard is because they don't want to take those pauses out between the slurs. But what we want to do is to make it rhythmic so that you play that last note and you roll up towards the fall board. Your thumb or your finger comes off the keyboard just slightly and then it goes right back down to the next note. Um, so as I'm playing this, what I want you to do is to notice that even though it looks like I'm coming way off the keys, I want you to notice how far my fingers actually do. I'm gonna play this with the metronome. You really shouldn't play it at home any faster than 70. You may start quite a bit slower until I can get this technique down, but I'll just demonstrate how the whole piece is supposed to sound.
want that to be nice and smooth. Notice my fingers don't come up very much and then they come right back down. That's the, you, you say bounce as you play it and then roll. Bounce, roll, bounce, roll. Um, the, what these repeats mean is that you play it, repeat, and the second time you ignore it and you play the last note. Repeat just means two times. So one and then two to there. And then you go to the next line. Play it, the repeat bounces you back to the beginning of the line and you play to the end. All right, that's rebounds. And the last one is our solo piece. And this is where we're mixing up the um, thirds with repeats also. And remember, a dotted half note is three beats. So it sounds like this. two worksheets for this week measuring thirds we want them to notice it's line to line to line to line those are thirds or space to space to space seconds are line space or space line that would be a second but thirds are the same the same spot on the ledger lines and then here you can read through up a third same note up a third and then they write in if it's uh, the names of the notes, so they're writing the notes here. Here they give the child a chance to, to write in what the third's here. And, okay, and then the last one, it's the same thing. They want you to measure up, so you want write, to write in the note that's a, that's a third up. And if your child's having trouble writing that, you could write it in yourself too and say, hey, is this right, is this wrong, is it a third, and play kind of a true-false kind of a thing. And then they want to go ahead and write in the uh, the names of the notes also. Um, we haven't really talked about the fact that even though this is bass clef, our notes upside down here, and this is just really the printer's preference as we get down, way down into the lower ledger lines. Uh, sometimes when they're printing the music, the notes will be upside down, and there's no fast rule with that at all. I, they, you, it would make sense that it would come back up again, but it doesn't always follow that rule. So we're going to start breaking that rule about bass clef stems point down and treble clef stems point up because uh, we're starting to get to a point where we're going to forget that rule. All right, that's this week. Good luck.